excited for this. Hi, this is W. Eric Martin with Board Game Geek News here taking a look at Legendary. This is the deck building game by Upper Deck uh, featuring heroes from the Marvel Universe. And like other deck building games, of course, you are uh, starting with a small number of cards and you add to that deck as the game goes on uh, by uh, recruiting heroes into your deck. And then you use those heroes to try to defeat villain, villains, save bystanders, and defeat the mastermind. Uh, if the mastermind is not defeated in this game, everyone loses. However, there is only a single winner, so you are still looking out for yourself. The game is not cooperative, uh, except in the sense that, you know, ideally you, you work together so as not to lose. But of course, someone can throw the game if they're, if they're into that, but, you know, that's not really the hero-ly thing to do, is it? Each player starts the game with a set of uh, wimpy shield characters. Those are uh, agents and troopers. Um, cards have a cost that's shown down on the uh, right here. And this is the number of recruit points that you need to add this hero to your deck. These are recruit points that you start with and you also start with some attack points. Okay, these guys are zeros. You cannot add any more of these to the deck. Uh, you don't want them anyway because they're kind of feeble. You can upgrade to the basic uh, better shield agent, Maria Hill, who, uh, you know, uh, costs three to recruit, is, gives you two recruit power whenever she comes up in your deck. Uh, you'll find her um, very silvery. So who you really want to add to your deck are the hero cards. Now there are 15 different hero cards, and each hero has its own deck of 14 cards. All right, you got Cyclops, Spider-Man, Iron Man, Deadpool, uh, Emma Frost, White Queen, um, Gambit, Wolverine, Black Widow, Thor, Hulk, Hawkeye, Nick Fury, and Rogue. Each hero comes in four flavors. Okay? You have the, the base common cards, which have a full color border, like these two Iron Man cards. You have a uncommon card, which has sort of an open border. And then you have the rare card, which exists uh, only once in each uh, hero deck which has no border at all. And these are the most powerful ones and the cards you want to buy when they come up. Each hero will have some number of icons up top here and they'll show group identification such as the Avengers or X-Men or S.H.I.E.L.D. or Spider Friends. Although there's only one Spider Friend in the box and they mentioned right in the rules for upcoming expansion more Spider Friends. Uh, Deadpool has nothing. Uh, they also have some other icons which show down here and those show what particular type of skills they have. Like uh, Iron Man is a ranged hero, and Thor is a, is a big brute. Uh, you've got different ones. And then those special icons will come into play when you play particular cards from your hand. But they don't come into play the first time that you play a card. So with Wolverine here, you got this icon. The first time that you play one of these cards uh, does nothing. But the next time that you play one of these cards, you get to do its special ability here, which is to draw a card. And so each hero has kind of its own uh, special flavor of what it's going to do, which naturally ties into the nature of the hero from the comics. So uh, Wolverine gets you lots of stuff because um, he's unstoppable in terms of, of how he goes on. And Spider-Man gets you cheap cards because, of course, you know, that's the underdog Peter Parker approach. And Hulk feeds on himself and he feeds on wounds if you get wounded in the game, uh, which, of course, makes him angrier, more powerful. Um, Storm gets to fight villains in particular locations or gets an advantage when she does so. Uh, I guess with our surgical lightning bolt strike can, you know, aim at particular locations. Uh, they all sort of work that, uh, along those lines. So who are you fighting in Legendary? Well, you're going to be facing off against one of four masterminds. And each mastermind has an attack value down here. This is number of attack points you need to defeat a mastermind. Each mastermind also has four tactic cards. And each of these has a different power on them. These cards are shuffled in place underneath the Mastermind card. Whenever you defeat the Mastermind by having that many attack points, you pull out one of these cards and you see what you do. So you get a little surprise. You don't know what the Mastermind is going to do. Uh, usually it's good because, of course, you're defeating him. So you get some special bonus or your uh, other players will get penalized as well. What's the mastermind trying to do? Well, it depends on what scheme you're using in the game. There are eight different schemes in the game. They have different setups down here on the bottom. They tell you how many scheme cards or scheme twist cards to mix into the villain deck. And when one of those scheme twist cards comes up, usually there's some special thing that happens on here. Um, so there's different ways to lose the game 
or you know, for the villain, the mastermind, to win the game, depending on what the scheme is. Uh, sometimes you'll want to just have all the scheme twist cards come up. Sometimes if a certain number of bystanders are captured by villains, then you lose. Or if a certain number of heroes are eliminated, or if the hero deck runs out, um, or if all the wounds are used up because you know all the, the heroes have been damaged so badly they can't hold anything off anymore. Um, so they all give a different flavor to the game, and you don't have to use any particular scheme with any mastermind. You can mix them up as you want. At the start of the game, you take five different hero decks at random, and you can shuffle them together and make one giant hero deck. You're going to place this deck on the board, you take five cards, you reveal them face up, and that's the HQ where you can recruit heroes from during the game. Anytime you recruit a hero, you immediately draw another one, so there are always five available to you. To set up the villain deck, you're going to take a certain number of scheme twist cards, uh, which varies depending on which scheme you're going to use. You add five Master Strike cards, and whenever one of those comes up, the Mastermind gets to take a special attack against each of the heroes. Uh, you have a certain number of Bystanders, uh, which varies depending on the number of players or possibly the number of the scheme you're using. You're also going to have a certain number of Villain Groups, okay? So you may have, uh, what was this, Hydra, uh, you may have Masters of Evil, um, which has a Rowan in it. Okay, Masters of Evil, if you say so. Uh, you may get the Skrulls, uh, the Brotherhood of Mutants. Mm, you got a few others. You got seven different ones that are in here. Each villain deck comes with eight cards in it. You shuffle all those together, and you're going to add one or two henchmen groups like the Sentinels or Doombots or uh, lesser peony type people um, who are easier to defeat. You shuffle all those together, and that's going to be your villain deck. It's fun watching me shuffle. Shuffling. That's building, deck building. Gotta shuffle. And here's the board set up in Legendary, where you've got the city, which is where the villains are going to go. You've got HQ, where the heroes are available for recruitment. you got uh, Maria, a whole stack of Silvery Maria Hill sitting here. The Mastermind with the tactics cards underneath, the scheme for this particular game. A whole pile of wounds to take. Wounds are terrible. They're just uh, garbagey filler that take up space in your deck. And you can remove wounds by recruiting nobody and fighting nobody for the turn. And you only remove whatever wounds you have in your hand. They go to the KO pile here, which shows what's out of the game. You got bystanders. Sometimes cards will bring additional bystanders into play. You got the villain deck and the hero deck. Now, at the start of your turn, you're going to have six cards in hand. You reveal the top villain card. And if it is a villain... Then he starts here in the sewers, okay? You then look at your six cards. You see what you have available to you. Uh, hey, I've got four recruit points. I've got two attack points. I can't fight this scroll here. Uh, sorry, Mystique. I can't fight Mystique. Uh, but I can buy Rogue or Hawkeye. Hmm, Hulk. Either of the Hulk cards. This uh, awesome Nick Fury card, cannot buy. So whatever you buy... It's going to go in your discard pile, along with all the cards from your turn. And you draw six new cards from your deck, and you carry on for the next turn. Now, whenever you reveal a bystander, it gets tucked under the rightmost villain. Okay, if you draw a scheme twist card, you do whatever it says on the scheme here. Sometimes this card stays in play, or it goes somewhere else to represent something. And if you draw a, another villain, the villain gets moved over and the new one gets put into place. If the villains move all the way across the board, and you would ha have a sixth villain come up, then whoever is on the bridge goes into the escaped pile, and sometimes there are special abilities on the villain cards that will come into play when a villain escapes. Or when a villain enters play, they might have an ambush ability that affects everyone. Or when you fight a villain, it might have an ability um, to let you do something. You may KO a, a hero from your hand, or get bonus points, or rescue an extra bystander, or do all types of things. Um, oh, we've got another a henchman, hand ninja. And they just keep going across the board here. And depending on what comes up in your deck, of course, sometimes you'll want to uh, pay it, you know, focus on fighting these guys. Uh, sometimes you'll want to worry about recruiting new heroes. Uh, you should always have five heroes when you go over here. Don't forget that lesson. Now, how do you actually get points in the game? Well, here are uh, the villain cards. Each have a certain number of points on them, which you can see in this tiny little dot here, perhaps. 
Uh, each bystander is worth a point as well. Each mastermind is going to be worth points. There are some cards that will give you additional points. Some hero cards will actually give you points as well, although not many of them. And when the game ends, that is, after you actually defeat the mastermind, uh, all four tactics cards have been claimed by people. After that happens, you then add up all the points in your deck and you see who wins. To give a summary of Legendary, it adds together a lot of what you've seen in other deck building games, but with some new stuff as well, uh, which is kind of what you expect from any deck building game. It's gonna have deck building. It's gonna be Dominion-like uh, in that feel for how you manage your hand. You're gonna be looking for ways to get rid of garbage in your hand, whether they're wounds or just the initial shield cards. Sorry guys, you're garbage. Um, but you know, initially useful. We love you at the beginning and then hit the red jack. Uh, you, you want to do that, but of course that depends on uh, which villains you're using and which heroes are there, what the mastermind is, what the scheme is. Uh, you've got all those variable things working together there, right? Uh, 15 different heroes with 14 cards each. Uh, you'll see all they come up. Um, there's seven different hero groups, there's four different henchmen groups, there's eight different schemes, there's four different masterminds, and you put all that together and you got a big stew of, uh, you know, variability in terms of how, how things come out, how things play. Um, you have a, an ascension-like track uh, with the heroes where the heroes are available for anyone to recruit, and whatever is not recruited stays around uh, until uh, until they are recruited, except minor thing if a hero escapes, oh, sorry, if a villain escapes, then you gotta uh, KO one of the heroes that's on the track. It's a minor thing just to shuffle up uh, some things that go on. And of course, you run through the hero deck because if the hero deck runs out, that's bad for you as well. And then you have the villains, which are separated instead of like Ascension, they're all mixed together with the, the, the monsters and the good cards. Uh, you've got the villain track, which is its own separate track that is, you know, flowing across the board. It's this little teletype thing that you have to, to get at. Uh, as I said previously in the Gen Con preview, it's the uh, Lucy and Ethel at the Chocolate Factory where they just keep running, just keep running. You gotta get those villains, you gotta knock them down, you gotta play whack-a-mole, you gotta do all that. Uh, so you get that fun where it's like, you know, oh, Venom's coming through here and oh, Iron Man flies in and fights them off. Uh, and then, you know, inflatable Spider-Man flies and swings into view and he's attacking and doing all sorts of fun stuff. And then you pull out your homemade Captain America shield uh, that your son wanted you to make. And, you know, uh, reflect everybody off there and go, you know, that's, that's sort of what you're getting at when you're trying to combine everything together. Uh, and it, it you know, has that nostalgic element that of course, um, well, if you've read those comics, then you have that nostalgic element. Um, and it puts it all together and it makes a, an interesting feel uh, just for the game in terms of, of how things flow. You know, it's, it's, you're working with people to make sure you defeat the mastermind, but of course you want to defeat the mastermind because that's where the majority of the points are going to come from. You want to mess around with these little putty villains, but, but you kind of have to. That's the wrap on Legendary. We put it all together. Um, hope that helps. See if you're interested or not, okay? Uh, to close, I have to say, HOLY SMARE!